I'm intrigued by LSU a lot because I think they have the best defensive coordinator in college football. That's Dave Aranda. The job he did just in his first year I thought was great. But now they arguably have maybe one of the top five offensive coordinators in Matt Canada. And I think that's the difference. I think LSU has always had great recruits. I mean, Les Miles did a good job of it. They keep a lot of in-state talent in a talent-rich Louisiana area. Um, and Ed Ogeron is as good, if not as a better recruiter than Les Miles. But LSU fans, and you probably see it as well too, and I'm sure you talked about it, they got frustrated because they have so many great athletes, so many recruits, yet they would play kind of like they were a Big Ten team where it was just, hey, let's get a fullback, let's you know toss the ball to number seven, Leonard Fournette, which was a good strategy, I get, but they never really opened up the offense. And Canada is bringing a completely different offense and that's kind of the wild card that nobody really knows about with LSU. I, I think years prior, they're like, we know what this LSU team is. Nobody has an idea what LSU is going to be this year. Yeah, well, it's a good strategy when you've got the best talent over the opponent about 10 times a year. But when you want to win a championship, you got to you got to line up against a team that's as good or better. And then you got to be able to trick them a little bit. And LSU just hasn't been able to do that. Um, if anybody out there knows what Pitt has brought to the table, it's been a very mundane offense up until like last year and the year before in Matt Canada, man, if you can make that Pitt dynamic offense uh, out of what they have, uh, I, I had a great deal. I, I went down to Baton Rouge for a spring tour and I sat with Canada and I asked him, I said, what is this offense going to look like? And we were off camera, we were getting mic'd up and he says, he looked me square in the eye, Mark, and he goes, I don't know. And I'm like, all right, that's kind of interesting. I never hear a coach say that. And he goes, I seriously, he's like, hell, I don't know. He's like, I can't, I don't know what type of offense I'm going to build until I see what I have. And I thought that was interesting because a lot of guys come in and go, this is my offense. This is how we run it. This is the personnel I need. For Canada, he's had teams that have been run heavy before and had success. He's had teams with better quarterbacks and wide receivers. So he had a pass heavy attack. So he's kind of like a chef that goes into the kitchen and goes, all right, what I got in the pantry, this is the meal that I'm going to make. And I think that makes a huge difference for LSU coming into the season. What's really cool about that, Peter, is we always hear about the best coaches being the guys that can adjust at halftime then come out with a different game plan in the second half. It's almost the same way in what you described with Matt Canada. Instead of going in and saying, I got to run this offense, I've tweaked it, it's it's exactly the way I want it, and we got to fit the personnel, he's going to go in there, assess, look at guys, look at what yeah. they do, and say, I, I can be the one that adjusts on the, on the fly so I can fit you better in terms of the and, personnel, and that we personnel. Have. I think the deal down in Baton Rouge for the longest time is people felt like Les Miles played favorites and he was stubborn and that if you were a less guy, guess what? You were a less guy. So they might have six unbelievable wide receiver recruits or, or, or talent, right? Well, only two of them were really going to play because they only went too wide most of the time. And you had four guys that weren't really getting a lot of reps that they weren't put in packages for. So they kind of just wasted away and it really kind of hurt the demeanor of this team. And I think what happened now when Ogeron came in and now with Canada, he's like, man, everybody go out there and compete. I don't know what the hell we have, but let's go out there and put you in space. And it, it energizes the team. Everybody feels ownership of it rather than just the leadership. So I, at the end of the day, their offensive line, I, don't, I still don't think is great. Uh, I, I say the offensive line is good, Mark, but the problem is, is that they're very thin. I think they only have 11 scholarship players uh, where most – programs have about 16 to 18 just because of death in the sec um so that that could be the big issue around lsu right now and when you think about uh, a third wide receiver not getting playing time and being pretty good and sitting let's say this is three or four years ago behind odell beckham jr and jarvis landry that's kind of a tough deal <laughs> yeah yeah saying. you know that right i mean and even Traven Durrell and malachi dupree yeah. watched it's like there's only and in that less miles offense there were only so many passes that were going to go around right I mean, that, that's the whole deal. You were probably going to throw the ball maybe 20 times a game. Well, you start divvying that up. That's not a whole lot of – that's not a whole lot of love for wide receivers. So, I mean, listen, when LSU won national championships, they won it with Matt Flynn and Matt Mock, right? Like, they weren't five-star recruits. They weren't game changers. They weren't Heisman Trophy guys. They were guys that were smart with the football. LSU played great defense, but they made plays when they needed to. They feel like Danny Etling can make plays when needed to under Matt Canada. 